Hello, welcome to NF Tuesdays. Thank you for watching. The purpose of this video is to dig into the terms and conditions of the NFL all day NFT series. This is essentially like the NFL's version of NBA Top Shot. You take an NFL highlight, you couple it with an NFT, you slap some terms and conditions on it and you sell it for a bunch of money. I was critical about the terms and conditions last week in my fine print Friday video. Please follow those. And this is the longer form follow up where I'm going to kind of walk you through the terms and conditions and let you know how I think as a lawyer, like where my brain goes. And I'm going to try to call out some provisions for you so that you, if you're an investor um, or you're interested in the market, you kind of know like why I don't really think these are a good idea. Listen, my number one rule for NFTs is don't hate the player, hate the game. I got no problem with the NFL selling NFTs and making money on it. Just like I really don't have a problem with Bored Ape selling the stupid ape pictures and making money on it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. The game is like the silliness of investing in these. I really don't see the upside. And I'm going to point out some points in the terms and conditions where I really think it shows that the limited, uh, the upside is limited. And especially where like if something goes wrong, you're really not going to have any help whatsoever if there is a uh, your keys are stolen or even if there's a mistake on the nfl's end it says that they can decouple your nft from the highlight they can delete the highlight altogether they can confiscate your nft which is like against the purpose of blockchain to get uh, in the first place but hey listen this is the world we're living in so let's look at the terms and conditions and i'll, I'll see what you can learn okay Okay, so these are the terms of service for the NFL all day application and the end user license agreement. This is a bit unique of a terms and service in the sense that up here, this part is all about like the terms of service for the app. Okay, so that's what will show up like on your phone when you are downloading it and you're creating an account and you have to click I agree. Yes. When you click I agree, that becomes a binding contract. The reason is because there's really no better way to do it. You can't get somebody's signature and contracts are formed when you make an affirmative action of acceptance. So if I agree to deliver a thousand apples in a cart to your house and you agreed to pay me a hundred dollars for them and then I delivered, but you never signed a contract. If I deliver the apples and you accept them and start eating them, that would indicate your acceptance of the contract and you owe, owe me a thousand dollars so likewise well we can't really get somebody's ex like signature on the terms of service what better way to do it than to have them just click a i agree box that's basically as good as we can do and yes that is a binding legal contract between you and the company so these are the terms upon which they're offering you access to the app and offering you access to the like highlight that the and if, you know, all day of NFT, NFL all day NFT is coupled with, and these are the terms under which you accept them. And if you breach the terms, then there are certain consequences. So this is a little unique in the sense that um, this pair, this top half of this is, has to do with the app. And then down here to the bottom, there's like a separate one for the end user license agreement. And that's really where the media license is. This is where it says like what the copyright really is that you're getting and what you actually own, okay? So the beginning is the app and they're, they're really kind of cover a lot of the same stuff. But for the purpose of this, really what we want to focus on is the license agreement because, because my complaint about NFTs in general, especially this one, is you really don't own anything. I'm going to show you where it says you don't own the underlying copyright of the highlight. You can't uh, make money on it. Uh, you can't repost it to your social media and brag about it. So if you do any of those things, you even might lose it all together. And that's my concern here. You really don't own anything. And if it, NFL basically has under their complete discretion of their judge, jury, and executioner about what happens, and that puts you at risk. And I'm going to explain to you why, okay? So what we're going to do is go through this agreement. And let me first explain to you that as a lawyer, when I'm reading these agreements, I don't read them top to bottom. These are more of like a encyclopedia where I learn, I read the headers and I'm like, okay, what do I want to know? And then I skip there, okay? Like ownership restrictions. Okay, that sounds important. So maybe I would do that first. But in this case, we're actually going to go all the way down here to the license agreement and we're going to work our way backwards. Because right here in section 7.3, all this stuff in caps, 
is the important part. And this is under the prohibited activities. So just to scroll up and give a little bit context, this end user license agreement is among you and Dapper Labs and NFL properties. This media license sets out the terms and conditions governing your right to access, display, or perform certain media made available by the providers and their licensors as part of your ownership of a unique non-fungible token associated with such media. Let's be very clear there. This is a non-fungible token associated with such media. It is not the same thing, and we're going to explain that a little bit. Each such NFT is associated with the applicable media, is referred to in this media license agreement as a collectible. So basically the link between the NFT and the media, the highlight, is what the collectible is. By purchasing or otherwise obtaining such collectibles, you agree to the terms and conditions as well as any other terms and conditions of use that may apply to your use of the app if you acquired such collectibles via the app. This means that everything above at the top of the agreement is applies here. Okay, so that's why that's in here. That's all included. You can update the terms. There's an arbitration provision. This is all normal. Okay, so let's just quickly read the definitions. Media means the art, design, drawings, and works of authorship which includes certain NFL intellectual property that is associated with a collectible you own. Okay, so notice here we have a few capitalized words. Usually the word collectible isn't capitalized. Usually the word own isn't capitalized, but in contracts you capitalize words and make them look uh, to kind of call attention to them. This means that there is a special definition. And right here you can see what own means. It's own means with respect to a collectible a collectible that you have purchased or otherwise rightfully acquired. Okay, that's important because there's what they're getting at here, here is if somebody else steals your keys to your NFT or your wallet or your app or your phone and you get it and they get it, they don't own the collectible even if they transfer it to themselves, okay? So that word there is, is key. Own means rightfully acquired from a legitimate source and if acquired via the app not through any other category B prohibited activities as defined in the app terms which are pretty confusing but you can look at them we're not going to cover those in this um, but it's basically like bots is essentially bots and fraud is essentially what category B prohibited activities are you can you know, way up at the top where proof of such purpose is recorded on the blockchain network okay so it has to be rightfully acquired legitimate source and proof of such per purchase is recorded on the blockchain. Okay, so that's what own means. So if you don't get it legitimately, if you don't rightfully acquire it, if you steal it or if you get it through a bot or something, um, or if it's not, uh, if the transfer is not recorded on the blockchain, then it's you don't own it. Okay, that's important. Then, But there's no funny business here. This is okay. Just being clear that this is like own isn't what you usually think it means. All right. A purchase collectible means a collectible that you own. All right. So we talked about collectible is the NFT coupled with the highlight. OK. And then a purchased one is a collectible that you own. So if you rightfully acquire from a legitimate source your collectible on the flow network, then you have purchased it. it, it it's not just a collectible. It's a purchase collectible. So that's basically saying we recognize that you own this particular uh, collectible, which is the NFT coupled with the highlight. So next here, let's just quickly say that the NFL IP means all IP, trademarks or service marks, logos, domain names, or other source identifiers, and a name, likeness, image, the persona in the NFL, etc., etc. Basically what this is saying is that the, the NFL IP is a is separate category, but um, as you see here, media means the art which includes certain NFL intellectual property. So what this is getting at is media is like an umbrella term. NFL intellectual property is part of the media, but not everything that the media might be. In, like, for example, the NFT and you know the website and stuff like that are in the app are also media. But the NFL IP is really what the NFL is concerned with. And you only own them if you get them through a legitimate 
um, rightfully, rightfully acquire them through a legitimate source. Ownership of a collectible. Because each collectible is an NFT, when you purchase a collectible in accordance with this media license and any other applicable terms, you own the underlying NFT. Each collectible is specifically associated with search media. Again, we're seeing this again. You own the underlying NFT, but each collectible is associated with certain media such that if you own the collectible, you have certain license rights in the associated media as set forth herein. What that's going to say, as you'll see, isn't that you own what that underlying media is. You don't own the highlight. You have the right to access it, basically. All right. License grant. Subject to your compliance with this license, the providers hereby grant to you the extent of their rights in the media. And for so long as you own the collectible, the worldwide non-exclusive, okay, so that means they can give it to other people, non-transferable, it means you can't transfer the license that's granted in you. You can transfer the NFT, but you can't transfer the, the rights that are associated with it. Non-assignable, you can't assign it to anybody else. Non-sublicensable, you can't duplicate the license, royalty-free, perpetual license to access, perform a display of the media associated with your purchase collectible, okay? All of these modifiers here are normal. It's important in a license to say whether that exclusive, because if you're buying something, usually you want to know whether they can sell to somebody else or are you paying a premium so that you're the only one, you have the exclusive rights to it, okay? You also don't want to grant rights to somebody that they can then go shop and trade off to somebody else. That's why you make it non-transferable and non-signable and non-sublicensable. And you want to say royalty free just to remove any doubt to, uh, that there might be some royalty due. And perpetual, you always want to put a time limitation on the license too. So these are, these are normal terms. It's just important to put them in there so that it's clear what the license is, all right? So you have this license to access, perform, or display the media, okay, but only solely for your own personal non-commercial use as part of a marketplace that permits the purchase and sale of your collectibles, et cetera, et cetera, or as a party of a third-party website or application that is approved by the providers in each case. So essentially, your rights that are granted here basically means you can show it on your phone, but you can't duplicate it you can't put it anywhere else you can't transfer it to anybody okay you have to sell the nft with it if you're going to do that type of stuff with the media and you can really only use that media and transfer it through their app or if they agreed that another app can or another marketplace can sell their nfts in that one too so that's really all you're getting but it's important to understand that these are non-commercial rights so you can't make money off this nft in any way this is a direct comparison to Board Apes, which specifically says you can, you know, commercialize your NF, your Board Ape, and put, you know, brand it or put it on T-shirts or whatever else they think that they can make money on. They're not going to work, but whatever. But you can't even try under the NFL, which makes sense because the NFL is very protective about how they, um, you know, what people can do with their intellectual property. So no funny business yet. But now let's just go down and let's get into the consequences because this is really where the uh, the meat of this is, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through 7.3 here first and we're gonna work our way up. And again, the point I'm trying to make to you is that like, again, this is more of like an encyclopedia to me rather than reading it top to bottom. Um, and you don't usually read this stuff in order. So it's common and it's easier to read some of these legalese if you actually go out of order a little bit or even reverse order. So let me explain why, all right? So let's read this. This paragraph is very important. Notwithstanding the foregoing, which we'll get to, if we reasonably believe that you are engaged in any of the media license prohibited activities, in addition to our right to delete your collectibles media, we can delete your highlight, we can delete everything about it, so you're left with nothing but an empty shell of an NFT if we want to. We also reserve the right at our sole and absolute discretion, okay? This is not a normal, you usually see that in there, but you're just making it very clear that the NFL is judge, jury, and executioner here. There is nothing else you can do about it. So if something goes wrong, you are burned, all right? 
So they reserve the right if they reasonably believe, which is a very broad standard that's very easy to meet that, and they have sole and absolute discretion, meaning you have nothing you can say about it, and you, without notice or liability to you, they don't owe you shit, they can take any or all of the following actions. They can either A, deem any transactional that took place via or as a result of such activities to be void ab initio. That means that the contract was void the day it uh, was signed. Um, basically, there was no contract in the first place. You got no rights, and they can rescind the contract, take their NFT uh, back and their media back. And or to immediately confiscate any collectibles, including the underlying NFTs. Now, listen, again, I understand why the NFL is doing this. They want to maintain uh, control over this app and NFL all day. But the whole point of NFTs was that it was immutable, wasn't it? So that you couldn't reverse it. And this is li literally saying in those exact words that they can retake and claw back the NFT, which is just, it de de defeats the point of the market of NFTs to me. Why don't we just do this off the blockchain and just through a regular application? I really don't understand it. So again, to immediately confiscate any collectibles, including their underlying NFTs that were purchased or acquired as a result of such activities. Hmm, what activities are they talking about? Again, these are the media license prohibited activities. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is collectively these things right here. So this says each of the foregoing, a media license prohibited activity. We're going to start with 7.1.2 and then we'll get up to this one. But basically, here's what you cannot do. You cannot create user accounts by automated means or under false or fraudulent pretenses. Fine, I got no problem with that. You can't use bots. 7.14, we'll go back to the three in a second. You can't involve using, employing, operating, or creating a computer program to simulate the human behavior of a user. So there are no bots, right? You can't involve the impersonation of another person via the use of an email address or otherwise. That would be called fraud because you're making a false statement of fact to enter a contract. And you do that, that is misrepresentation and fraud. You cannot fraudulently represent the NFL, you are somebody else, and acquire rights on behalf of of yourself because they basically the parties to the contract are not accurate you're lying about who the parties to the contract are and that is called fraud and that also allows them to rescind the contract so I don't have any problem with any of this stuff first okay so if you I don't have a problem with like prohibiting bots and prohibiting fraud that's fine so let's or 7.1.5 involve acquiring collectibles through inappropriate or illegal means including, among other things, using a stolen credit card or a payment mechanism that you do not have the right to use or purchasing a collectible and then attempting to charge the cost back to your payment method while still maintaining ownership or control of the collectible or selling, gifting, or trading the collectible to somebody else. Okay, so this must be a big problem for NFT marketplaces because if the blockchain is purportedly to be immutable and your credit card is not, then what you can do is I'll buy this thousand dollar NFT. I'll wait for the ownership of the NFT to be transferred to me in my account through or for which I have the unique keys that nobody else in the universe has or has access to. So therefore um, I have concrete solid ownership of this unit on the blockchain. However, we do credit card chargebacks all the time. So I've got the NFT, let's do a little bait and switch. I own the NFT, I'm gonna do a chargeback on my credit card, um, in which case, uh, you know, the ownership of the NFT should revert back to the app, but on certain blockchains, um, as was the purpose of blockchains, you couldn't reverse the transaction, which puts the credit card companies in the top spot. What if it was fraud? What if it wasn't fraud? What if they're just being fun making some funny business and trying to, um, you know, basically have their cake and eat it, eat it too. So it makes sense that they would do it this way. And again, this implicates what own means. Because if you do this, if you do a chargeback, you don't own the NFT under their definition. 7.1.6, otherwise involve or result in the wrongful seizure or receipt of any collectibles or other digital assets. Okay, so each of these are a media license prohibited activity which triggers their right 
to, again, without notice or liability, to void the contract or immediately confiscate any collectibles, including their underlying NFTs, all right? But there's one part left in the media, media license prohibited activity that we haven't done yet, and this is this one, and this is where I'm a little concerned. Involve a result in any violation of Section 3 above. Well, let's scroll up. Section 3 restrictions. You agree that you may not nor permit any third party to do or attempt to do any of the following without their express written consent. Okay. A. Modify or create derivative works based on derivative works means like a like a sequel. Okay. Or like if there's a, a book, then you make a movie off it. Or if there is an NFL highlight that you create, you try to make a piece of art out of it. Okay. So a derivative work is like one copyright being transformed into a new copyright. So you can't modify or create derivative works based on the media, your highlight, or your purchase collectible in any way, including without limitation to shapes, designs, drawings, attributes, or color schemes. Okay, no big deal there. I understand that. NFL doesn't allow people to, you know, modify and make money off of, even if it's for personal use, their IP. No big deal. B. Use the media for your purchased collectible, including the name, likeness, image, or persona of any player or any person associated with such NFL content to advertise, market, promote, or sell any third-party product or service, or otherwise use the media persona associated with the media for your own or any third party's commercial benefit. Okay, I understand that. The NFL doesn't want you to use these highlights to sell, I don't know, Bud Light ads when they've got a, you know, Coors Light, you know, Blue Rocky Mountains, you know, corporate sponsor. Okay, I can wrap my head around that. I don't have a problem. C, use the media or any persona sat associated with the media in connection with the images, videos, or other forms of media that depict hatred, intolerance, violence, cruelty, etc., that could reasonably be found to constitute hate speech or otherwise infringe upon the rights of others. Again, no problem here. That's fine. D, use the media or any persona for your purchase collectible in movies, videos, or any other form of media. Here's where I start to have a problem. Except to the limited extent that such use is expressly permitted in these terms and solely for your own personal non-commercial use, okay? My problem there is that if you post this on Instagram or Facebook or somebody else were to take a foam picture of you using the app or showing the highlight, technically that would be a breach of these restricted uses and that would give the NFL a reasonable belief and exercise and trigger their sole and absolute discretion to remove the NFT and remove the media, okay? Now, look, it's not like, I don't think the NFL is going to do that, but they can, okay? And we don't know how this is gonna play out yet. And you see a lot of mistakes happen um, through service providers like this. For example, Amazon has a bad reputation among um, business owners on their site because they will take light, uh, like they will take products down with basically uh, without any explanation and just like hang their businesses out to dry. And I think that's gonna happen here eventually with somebody at the NFL all day, where if they make the slightest little slip up about um, you know using the collectible and the highlight that it's attached to that might vanish in a second and I will show you later where there's not shit you can do about it okay so this is my worry is if you make the slightest mistake you better have that calculated into your decision when you're buying this because even if there was a mistake or again if somebody else took a camera phone picture or something of you showing it to them or something I think that would probably trigger an, a reasonable belief for NFL to take it down. And that's the type of scenario I'm worried about because they are judge, jury, and executioner. And you have to be careful about this stuff if you're spending money on it. So that's D. E, you also may not sell, distribute for commercial gain, including giving away in the hopes of eventual commercial gain or otherwise commercialized merchandise that includes, contains, or consists of the media or any persona associated with the media. So you can't take a still frame of the highlight and then put it on a t-shirt or something and then or a coffee mug and expect to make money on it. So basically don't use the media or the highlight for literally anything. 
F, attempt to trademark copyright or otherwise acquire additional intellectual property rights in or to the media, including elements thereof for any persona associated with the media. That's fine. Again, we understand the NFL doesn't want you using their copyright. G, create, sell, or attempt to create or sell fractionalized interests in any purchase collectible or the media associated with such purchase collectible. So you can't like fractionalize the NFT and sell off little pieces um, as some uh, marketplaces were trying to do with the more expensive and popular NFTs like Bored Apes. You may not separate, unlink, or, or decouple the media or any persona from the purchase collectible or the underlying NFT with which it is associated. So you can't take a screen record of that highlight. You can't copy it with somebody else's phone. You can't do anything like that. And God forbid they find out about it. Or even if they make a mistake and they think they found out about it, but really didn't do anything wrong, they can confiscate your NFT and the underlying art, leaving you with nothing. I otherwise use the media or any persona associated with your purchase collectible for your or any third party's commercial benefit. Or J, use or exploit the media or any persona in any way, whole or in part, except as per expressly permitted by this media license. Okay, so... Quick pause here, all right? So this is the consequences of what happens and what they can do. Again, I wanna make it real clear that I'm not criticizing the NFL for selling these NFTs at all. If they can make money on it, make that cash girl just like board apes, just like a girl selling her bath water or used panties on eBay. I got no problem with you selling it. I just don't think it's a smart purchase, all right? I want to be real clear about that. And also, let me say, again, I don't think the NFL is just going to start, like, taking back people's NFTs, like, without any good reason. Um, I think that that's in bad business for them to do it. I think that they would get probably a big uh, media backlash and Internet backlash for them to do it. So they're still going to act in good faith. But what I'm worried about is, like, from a purchaser's point of view, if they mistakenly think that you violated one of these prohibited activities. There's nothing you can do about it. And just like getting something delisted on Amazon, they're not going to be, be there to helpful to help you. There's no customer service you're going to be able to call to explain your case or something. Okay. So you have to understand that these can vanish at the split second. This is not the blockchain like you think it was the blockchain. These can disappear. They have the right to make these disappear. And that's, that really doesn't jive with what the blockchain was meant to do. So you have to know that going in. And you also have to understand that if they do delete that, that media, that highlight that's associated with, you're just left with an empty shell of an NFT on the blockchain. And that's all you have to show for it. So be real smart about this. I just don't think you, you really don't own anything. All right. Now, let me show you a couple things about their limitation of liability. This is all really normal stuff, but let me just show you how clear it is and how difficult it would be to fight that uphill battle. Okay. So here's second eight disclaimer, limitation of liability. Every terms of service has this. This is not unusual, but let's read some of this. Okay. The collectible, including the associated media, is provided to you on an as-is basis, meaning they don't make any statements of fact about it. There's nothing you can rely upon. It's on an as-is basis, and the providers expressly disclaim any warranties or conditions of any kind, either expressed or implied, including without limitation, warranties for conditions of title. Basically, they're saying, we don't, we don't even promise that you're going to get actual title for this. That, that's important because if you were to buy the NFT on the marketplace from somebody who didn't quote unquote own it, like if they, if you bought basically a stolen NFT, then you're not going to be able to, it, you don't own it. They don't even promise that the stuff that you're buying on the marketplace, the title and the ownership to it is actually valid. Okay. You also, no warranties of non infringement, merchantability, or fitness for a particular purpose. That's all normal stuff, okay? And then, <clears throat> in no event will any of the providers or their affiliate be liable for indirect, incidental, consequential, or other non-direct non damages of any kind in connection with the collectible. This is all normal, okay? So what this is saying is, like, we have no liability. We're not promising you shit. If you, you're taking this as is, this is literally like buying a car from uh, another owner. They're going to say that you're taking this as is. I don't promise you the engine's going to run. 
I don't promise you that the wheels are going to stay on the car. I can make no promises whatsoever. I don't even promise you that this NFT that you're supposedly buying is actually like you're actually buying proper title to it. So don't get your hopes up. And if you think that you bought something with a clean chain of title, it turns out you're wrong, but you had you bought it, you could have, you know, sold it again for a 2x, 3x, 10x the value. They don't owe you for that 9x, 8x or whatever that you lost because those are indirect and consequential damages. So if anything goes wrong on the app and you miss out on a sale, zip, nada, you got nothing for it. And again, I don't blame the NFL for this. This is normal terms and conditions, but users usually don't understand this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna show you another part. Last sentence here, the maximum aggregate liability of the providers for all damages and causes of action, whether in contract, tort, or otherwise, in connection with the collectible, we the, will be the greater of the amount you paid for it or 250 Canadian dollars because Dapper Labs is a Canadian company. But let me show you one more thing in the app terms of use and their limitation of liability. Okay, so this is up in section seven disclaimers for the app and I just wanna go through this real clear. Okay, so this is section seven disclaimers for the app terms of service towards the top. I just want to go through this paragraph real quick because we got a smart contract disclaimer here, okay? We and the rest of the providers will not be responsible or liable to you for any losses you incur as a result of your use of the Flow network or your electronic wallet, including but not limited to any losses, damage, or claims arising from user error, such as forgotten passwords, incorrectly construed smart contracts, so if the smart contracts don't work right, they are not liable. We are not even promising you that the smart contracts that are going to execute will deploy correctly. And to me, like, of course, I wouldn't want to have anything to do with one of these, right? Also, your accidental, unintentional, or inadvertent burning or trade of a collectible or other transactions, server failure, etc., corrupted wallet files, unauthorized access or activities by third parties, use of viruses, phishing, brute forcing, or other electronic means against the app, the flow network, or any electronic wallet. But the clear here, the key here is that they will not be liable for incorrectly construed smart contracts. It goes on to say collectibles are intangible digital assets that exist only by virtual of the ownership record maintained in the flow network all smart contracts are conducted and occur on the decentralized ledger within the flow network. We have no control and make no guarantees or promises with respect to smart contracts. So you thought you were buying an NFT, right? You for, probably thought that, oh, I actually have ownership over this and they can't take it back. Nope, wrong. The NFL can actually retake the, your NFT, explain to me how that it like serves the purposes of a blockchain, I don't get it. And also, we're not even promising you that these smart contracts will deploy correctly. So listen, again, don't hate the player, hate the game. This is on you, the buyer, to understand what you're getting into. Another quick part here, number part nine, this is of the app terms and conditions, assumption of risk. You understand there's value and volatility. There's tax implications you have to understand. Use of the blockchain, the app does not store, send, or receive collectibles inherent risks with an internet currency. So they're just making it real clear to you that like, you know, a lot of shit can go wrong with, uh, with the blockchain, okay? Okay, and now last part I wanted to get through is the dispute resolution and binding arbitration provision, okay? This is really isn't that abnormal. Almost every uh, service provider, including Amazon, eBay, anything you buy online, um, Apple Terms of Service, Google Terms of Service, Android, literally every app has you know, a disclaimer, a disclaimer of warranties, limitation, liability, indemnification section, and then usually has a binding arbitration clause. And the reason they do this is because it's a lot harder um, to win a lawsuit when it's one person going up against a big company. But when you see, get a bunch of people together in like a class action, they start to have some power and they can do, you know, they can fight with the, the bigger company. So they make you disclaim this as a term of the sale, basically saying, if it weren't for this part of the contract, we would give you nothing. We wouldn't offer you the app or the service at all. So this is part of the deal. If you want to sue us, you have to go to arbitration. 
That's normal. That's fine. But you got to understand this going in and let me show you how difficult it's going to be to win one of those arbitrations. So right here, you and the providers expressly give up the right to have a trial by jury. You expressly give up your right to participate as a member of a class action in a lawsuit, including but not limited to class action lawsuits involving such dispute. Binding arbitration. Let me explain to you why this is going to be difficult. So it says, except for small claims disputes and is set forth in section 10.4 below, all disputes arising out of or in connection with this media license or in any respect, any defined legal relationship associated this therewith or derived therefrom shall be referred to and finally resolved by arbitration administered by JAMS. What is JAMS? JAMS is a mediation or a arbitration company. And they're going to do this arbitration under their streamlined arbitration rules and procedures to make it go fast. The most recent version, they even give you a link to it here. And they are incorporated by reference. And here's, the pro here's another problem. The place of arbitration shall be in Vancouver, Canada. Except if JAMS has no arbitration there, then in any city in Canada where JAMS has an arbitration office, unless the arbitrator determines the dispute can be resolved, on the submission of written papers or you exercise your right to an in-person hearing in your hometown area. We agree that for any arbitration you initiate, you'll pay the filing fee up to a maximum of $250 if you're a consumer, um, which is actually pretty good. And we will pay the remaining JAMS fees and costs for any arbitration initiated us. We will pay JAMS fees and costs. Okay, listen up. You want to sue the NFL about NFL all day. You know that you are only going to pay $250 towards that arbitration. The NFL has an agreement with Jans. Everything is going to be arbitrated by them, and they're going to pay the remainder of the cost uh, that Jans is going to receive for the arbitrations. Think about what this does to the incentives. Jams is supposed to be an independent arbitration arbitrator, right? However, who's paying their bills? Is it the NFT owners who are paying a maximum of $250 per arbitration? Or is it the NFL who's paying everything else? I encourage you to look up on Google and search Jams Arbitration, especially in Hollywood. It is well known in Hollywood and California that Jams Arbitration favors the big studios because they pay the arbitrators, they pay the bills. If they didn't rule in favor of the NFL more often than not, do you think the NFL would continue to use Jams arbitration? I don't. I like to put the American Arbitration Association as the uh, uh, arbitrator when I do use arbitration clauses, um, but this is why they do it this way. Jams has a reputation of being biased towards big companies. And on top of that, even if you wanted to fight that battle, where does it have to take place? has to take place in British Columbia. Beautiful province. I've been there many times. I love Vancouver and everything. However, it's not a very convenient place for everybody to go travel and arbitrate a case. So these are the problems with the NFL all day terms and conditions. One, you don't own shit. You don't own the underlying media. You might own the underlying shell of an NFT that is associated with the media. But if they reasonably believe in their sole and absolute discretion that you have violated the use restrictions of that NFT and the associated media, then they can confiscate and would claw back your NFT. If there's any problem you have with it, or let's say the smart contract doesn't deploy correctly, well, there's nothing they're going to do about it because they disclaimed all of their liability regarding that. And if you want to take them to court, you're welcome to do so, but you're signing up for an arbitrator that's going to be biased in their favor, and you have to go to Vancouver, probably, to fight your battle. How do you like those terms now? Listen, again, number one rule about NFTs is don't hate the player, hate the game. I got no problem with the NFT, NFL selling these NFTs and making money off it, just like I don't have any problem with anybody creating an NFT and selling it, assuming that they do it legitimately, just like girls on eBay selling their bath water and used panties. Listen, make that cash flow. I got no problem with it, but I don't understand why you'd buy it, right? These NFL all-day NFTs, just like NBA Top Shot, just like Bored Apes, I just don't really see the underlying benefit there. 
Yes, it'll be fun in the meantime. Yes, I understand that you can make money on it on the marketplace and it's fun to do. So you really have to bake into your decision to get into NFL day that like there's an entertainment cost here that you're going to be having fun with. And I can justify some participation on those ends. But if you think that this is steel tight and that you actually have any rights over anything you purchase or rights to or remedies to get any recourse whatsoever, whether through their customer service or through the courts or arbitrators of law, you're probably not going to get very far. And this is only considering the legal side of things. And we're not even auditing the code or anything yet. I'm very skeptical about NFT projects for that reason. Please uh, like, subscribe, and follow. Follow more NF Tuesdays, more Fine Print Fridays, because I'll be diving deeper and deeper into different NFT projects and the differences in their terms and conditions, the rights that they provide, and just kind of doing a deep dive on NFTs in general. So thanks for watching. Have a good week.